Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast. And in today's forecast, we'll be talking about a relatively large weather pattern change that is going to be coming to the United States over the next week. This is going to continue to bring a few more shots of severe weather. And in addition to that, we're going to be talking about a big cool down across a large chunk of the United States. And there is also a hurricane that is on the horizon that is likely to become a major hurricane in the Atlantic Ocean. And we're going to be talking about exactly where that's going to be going and what kind of impacts that might bring to areas like the United States, Canada, and perhaps even Bermuda. All right, let's jump right into the infrared imagery right now. And overall, yesterday was actually a relatively crazy day in a couple of areas. Back over in central Oklahoma, we had a huge flood event. We had several areas between five to 10 inches of rain in a very short amount of time. There was some pretty significant flooding in the morning. Luckily, a lot of the rain moved out throughout the afternoon, but notice this little convection from very late last night. That is also going to bring some additional rainfall to areas that simply just do not need it. Now, we are in August, and something like this is pretty rare. Actually, Oklahoma City did have one of their top 10 rainfall days of all time yesterday, and it was really just crazy. Again, several inches of rain fell anywhere from 5 to even upwards of 11 inches of rain fell in parts of central Oklahoma. The east coast of the United States does remain relatively quiet compared to before when we had Debbie. There's a little low spinning just to the north of New England, but overall not really bringing much aside from cloud cover. And also, I want to point out, look at this. We don't have a whole lot of cloud cover in the northern tier of the United States. And one thing I do want to point out is that there were northern lights visible last night, even as far south as areas like Texas. People with high exposure cameras were able to capture some really incredible northern light photos. Now, this is an example of some of the northern lights that we saw last night. This is from Hunter Hurley over on Twitter over in near Kansas City, Missouri. And just notice, again, just unbelievable stuff that we're seeing even that far down to the south in Kansas City. Man any places like Minnesota, Kentucky, again, even Texas, and even Arizona were reporting at least some northern light activity with high exposure cameras. It wasn't always visible to the naked eye unless you were back up in really far northern plains like, you know, Minnesota or Michigan, for example, but definitely really crazy stuff. Now, the northern lights were not really expected last night, and so was the rain. The rain was not really expected to be this crazy across Oklahoma. We had several areas, especially in the orange shaded areas, even some of those brown shaded areas just to the south of Norman, Oklahoma. Oklahoma, pick up as much as 10 to 12 inches of rainfall in a very short amount of time. And this is the rainfall accumulation through about seven o'clock last night. So again, just a lot of rain fell across areas in central Oklahoma. And even back over near Muskogee, we also saw a good amount of rainfall out of this particular event. So the weather is about to change quite a bit across the United States over the next week or so, as we are going to continue to see a relatively, you know, quiet weather pattern in a way, but we are going to continue to see some shortwave troughs. And that's all going to come back over near the Rocky Mountains as we go into the middle of the week. Here's your jet stream right here. We're going to be watching for these little shortwave low pressure systems to move across the Rocky Mountains throughout the week. These will bring some small scale showers, thunderstorms, perhaps even a couple of small severe weather events as we go into the middle and end of the week. We'll be watching by the weekend for this trough to move over back into the Midwest and that could actually maybe begin at least a small scale severe weather event from like Michigan back into the Ohio Valley for maybe Friday or Saturday. And then once we go into Saturday into Sunday, that that trough is going to continue to move to the east very slowly. That's actually going to basically repel almost this low pressure system that's going to be Ernesto and kind of move it away from the United States. So that's actually good news that this even exists. If it didn't, we could be talking about a completely different scenario with Ernesto. What's going to happen as we go into the end of the weekend and eventually into early next week is that we are likely going to see a Omega block pattern return, which if you remember, these usually do bring more of a heat wave and also usually a drier weather pattern, especially to the southern tier of the United States. And that will definitely be something that we're we'll going to have to watch for as we go into next week, as we are currently in the peak of summer, which is going to be, you know, the hottest time of the year, basically, for most of the country. Here's what we're looking at with the future radar for the next several days. So again, showers, storms possible today and tomorrow across the Great Plains. This is going to be a common reoccurrence all the way through the middle of the week, where we could even get some more severe weather, maybe in like Minnesota or Iowa. Overall, it doesn't look super concerning, just something to watch for. By the time we go into Thursday and Friday, more showers and thunderstorms storms will be possible from Michigan back into Illinois. We might actually have a live stream sometime near the tail end of this week for one of these severe weather setups. I kind of alluded to this on Twitter, but I didn't really think we would have any more live streams this month, just purely due to how the weather is currently going. But we might have something with one of these small scale severe weather events that's expected this week or even perhaps next week. By the time we go into Friday into Saturday, this will continue to bring some showers and thunderstorms back over in the Ohio Valley in the Northeast. Uh, again, notice Ernesto well off the coast of the United States. It's 
probably going to stay that way. I think right now the chances of a landfall in like New England is like 10% and then anything else down to the south is like a 2% chance or less. It's a very low chance. So right now, not super concerned about Ernesto compared to a couple of days ago. Things have changed and that was kind of expected, but good news is it should stay offshore, but we'll continue to see some showers and thunderstorms up and down the east coast. Meanwhile, things will dry out across the Great Plains as we go into Sunday. Now the temperatures over the next few days, you're going to feel a difference depending on where you are. Down in the southern plains, it's going to be brutally hot. The Midwest and the northern plains, nicer for this time of the year for today. By tomorrow and even back into Wednesday, the temperatures will start to be on the rise again back over in the Midwest and the central plains, but that will not last super long. We'll have some showers, storms, and a cold front that should drop some temperatures as we go into Thursday and Friday, and then back by Saturday as well as into Sunday, things are going to start to cool down back over in both the northeast and as well as the Ohio Valley, where high temperatures for the most part will be in the 60s, 70s, and even some low 80s. Now, the tropics are beginning to heat up. We do have potential tropical cyclone 5 that has developed just to the east of the Lesser Antilles. This is expected to be our next hurricane. It would be our Nesto, and then eventually as this moves to the west, it'll start to actually turn to the north, which we're going to show you here in a second. There's a wide variety of scenarios that could happen with this potential tropical cyclone, one of which is that this tries to go a bit more up the east coast of the United States. The more likely scenario is that this goes towards Bermuda, and then a much less likely scenario is that this somehow goes really far to the east, avoiding all land, even including Bermuda. So a lot of scenarios that could evolve, and I'm going to kind of show you which one I think is going to happen here in just a moment. Now, the National Hurricane Center has released their forecast for potential tropical cyclone 5, and overall right now, again, it's just a potential tropical cyclone, nothing crazy, but as we go into this evening, it is expected to become our next tropical storm and our next name storm, which will be our Nesto. Once we go into Tuesday and Wednesday, this will be impacting areas in the Lesser Antilles, including Puerto Rico, as a stronger tropical storm, and then by Wednesday evening, this is likely going to be a hurricane just to the east-northeast of the Dominican Republic. The good Good news is, is as, as this intensifies, it is not going to be really impacting these areas after Wednesday, because this is expected to get very close to being a major hurricane by Friday evening. Now, from there, where does this go? Well, right now, the National Hurricane Center does think that this will be going in the direction of Bermuda. There is still a potential this does go a bit further west. There's still a chance it goes further east. Obviously, we are hoping that this just curves out to sea, but on, honestly, I don't think it's going to do that. I think this is at least at the bare minimum going to impact Bermuda. Area Areas along the East Coast still have to be on alert for this. Even though it's a low chance of impacting those areas, it's definitely still possible. Nova Scotia and New England in particular would have a better shot of seeing some sort of impacts out of Ernesto. Now, what I'm going to show you in this segment is a combination of a bunch of ensemble members. And this is going to give you an idea of what the uncertainty looks like and also how strong this part particular system could get. Now, the numbers that you're going to see on your screen here, there's going to be two digits, and you might see them a bit clearer as this moves to the north. But those two digits indicate the last two numbers of pressure. So if it says 04, that means 1,004 millibars. If it says 92, that means 992 millibars. So it gives you an idea of intensity with this particular system. So by Wednesday into Thursday, there's a lot of consensus here that this is going to be right near Puerto Rico. By the time we go into Thursday into Friday, notice how it takes a turn to the north. So again, a lot of models are showing that this is going to turn to the north, eventually going in the direction of Bermuda. Now, these particular ensemble members range anywhere from a weak tropical storm, which is very unlikely, back into potential potentially a Cat 1 or even maybe close to a Cat 2 hurricane by Friday afternoon. Now, by Saturday into Sunday, this is expected to continue to intensify as it moves towards Bermuda. Now, notice the spread, though, does become a bit larger here back out in the Atlantic Ocean. There's a couple of models that bring this closer to Florida, but the general gist is that most of them are still keeping this well out to sea and away from areas like Florida or even the East Coast. Now, after Sunday into Monday, things become pretty uncertain. The system is expected to move pretty quickly as we go into early next week since the jet stream is going to catch this and also the Bermuda high should be able to pull this really away from the United States but in the unlikely scenario that it doesn't there is still a chance that this could impact areas like New England or Nova Scotia I don't see there being major impacts along the coast uh, you know, along the east coast aside from just higher wave heights and maybe some swells but that would really be about it New England and Nova Scotia though still have to be on alert because if this system does for whatever reason not go as far to the east as we think it will it could still bring some impacts to Nova Scotia in New England. This really does remind me though of Hurricane Lee from last year where that became a really intense hurricane and really just kind of went up to the north and east and it eventually impacted Nova Scotia mostly and New England, but it wasn't really anything too crazy aside from rainfall. So I think that's going to be a similar scenario here with Ernesto. 
And just a heads up, if you are a member of the channel, don't forget we have a new bloopers video out on the members only tab. If you want to go check that out, highly recommend it. It is the funniest bloopers that we've had so far from our weather forecast. Definitely recommend you give it a watch. And if you're not a member, you can click the top link in the description to become a member. Any tier has access to the bloopers videos. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.